Good evening, everyone. I'm not Liz Seka, by the way. <laughs> I'm Liz Seka, for those who do not know. And I'm very honored to be here tonight with you for these awards. <clears throat> um, tonight is one of those days, few days, <laughs> that make all of that hassle worth it. Because you guys do hassle, um, and you did produce great work. So congratulations to all of you finalists, because as you know, not everyone will be able to take away the top award, but being a finalist is, um, is good enough, I think, and congratulations to you. And I will not waste any more time to <laughs> stand between you and that moment when you know where in the scheme of things your celebrations are going to be. I just want to talk about our experience this year with, um, with the judging and the period uh, to enter these awards this year was rather <laughs> very compressed as you would have known because it was like a few weeks in May, wasn't it? Yeah, so it was really, really compressed and I'm sure it felt the same way for you. It felt, this, it was exactly like that to us. So as a result, within a few days of the deadline, um, there were a few dozen entries and the organizers, SANEF, uh, were concerned that uh, people would not have entered as they would have wished. So they extended the deadline by a couple of days. Um, as it turned out, they need not have worried because uh, by submission deadline, there were 404 entries that had been received. And the entries that had taken advantage of that extension took that number up to 426. And however, this is not a fair reflection of the amount of reading, of viewing, and listening the judges had to do. Because entries in some categories, particularly features, your features is a lot. <laughs> Lifestyle and investigations were of bodies of work. Uh, that would have taken the number closer to 600 entries that the judges had to deal with. And the judges were pleased overall by the diversity, by the quality of the entries, especially given the shorter amount of time that entrants, entrants had for this year's awards. So this year we had a new category, business, and we were gratified to see the number of entries for that category because usually it takes a while for a new category to bed down. Um, one such category, one has to say, is the indigenous language reporting and community media, which was introduced last year. There are only three entries for this one, and one of which belonged to a different category then which left two like real categories. But it took the judges identifying four entries that had been entered in other categories to bring the number of entries for this category to six. So the, the judges are useful actually. <laughs> they are not so useless. Judges are useful because sometimes people do not know where to enter. Okay, I'm looking at you photographers. Anyway, so this has given us the impression that this category is still misunderstood. However, that decision by the judges to transfer in some, in some entries is why there is a winner in this category. So well done, judges. And photography is another area where sometimes 
it takes the judges to move entries to the correct category. I'm repeating myself, but that's fine. <laughs> Cate photographers need to hear this a few more times. <laughs> yeah, okay, sorry, Leon. <laughs> I love all of you, Spiwe, Felix, Leon. I'm not being shady, but anyway, so for this year's competition, the features and news photographs had very good submissions with several strong contenders. The sports category, though, only had nine entries. Even with this good showing, the judges felt there weren't enough entries about some of the biggest news events that represented newsworthy moments in the country in the past year. And those moments subsequently made news headlines here and even abroad. So, entries depicting the April 2022 KwaZulu-Natal floods one of the most catastrophic events, natural events, uh, this country has recorded, um, as well as the impact of load shedding, were some of those that the jury had expected to find in the news category. However, that wasn't the case. Another positive development is that broadcasters really showed up this year. Um, both in quantity and in the quality of the entries. However, this applied mostly to television and not radio, for which the lack of entries, particularly from the public broadcaster, was most notable, and the judges couldn't really make out what the reason would be. Could it be a result of talk shows having replaced current affairs programs, uh, that had allowed for in-depth radio journalism using the medium of sound. Uh, the judges have also expressed concerns about the lack of narrative cohesion in some television news entries, which rely heavily on sound bites without providing enough context or background information. So while this approach can work in situations with limited resources, it can also hinder journalists from showcasing their skills and producing truly compelling and informative news stories. So it was a challenge for the judges, though, to evaluate print and broadcast entries in the same categories. They found that this made the competition a bit unbalanced. For example, to weigh an hour-long documentary against a 1.2 thousand word print feature was a bit of a challenge, but here we are. Um, tonight is about honoring the work of journalists who continue to hold those who exercise public power in all spheres to account, and the managers who facilitate that work. We salute all of you for your dedication. The biggest thanks. <laughs> the biggest thanks, of course, go to Standard Bank for making all of this possible. Uh, without their long-term commitment, and if you have been around the Sigvilles, you know that Standard Bank has been with us for a very long time, and we really do appreciate this commitment. So we wouldn't have this opportunity for the journalism fraternity to pet itself on the back. Uh, the judges would also like to thank SANEF for organizing the awards and tonight's ceremony. So a word of gratitude goes to the judges who availed themselves for the community service of adjudicating these awards. It is community service. Really, 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 it, it is. And every year when I've been asked to convene <laughs> the judges for, for these awards, and then you look and you look and you ask people, are you available? And people have got things to do. Uh, and are not available, and you must find 
judges to replace. Um, it's difficult because we need people who are not really aligned to any media house that is currently producing some of the work that gets adjudicated. So it's not easy and then you have to find those people. So really, and you will know that the time that it takes is a lot. So I would just like to name the judges who made themselves available this year. That's Tyrone August, that's Kim Clutie, that's Melanie N. Ferris, that's Ryland Fisher, Pippa Green, Poshia Koboe, Taboli Shilo, Mabim Hlangu, Leslie Mufugeng, Ruth Mudau. Where are these judges? I haven't seen them here. I'm like, I'm naming names and I'm like, where are, is that you, Leslie? Oh, okay, I'm happy to say, I'm like, come on, <laughs> show yourself. Okay, yes, Ruth Mdau, Andy Lendingi, Neo Nzoma, Mary Papaya, Gus Silva, and Bodyguard Trump. So, <laughs> once again, it has been my singular honor to convene the judging for the Standard Bank Siguville Awards. And good luck, everyone. Okay, thank you.